So let's begin by setting up the tone. So I'm going to quickly show us these three setups and then we will see why I'm going to be doing what I'll be doing. All right. So I have this setup one here and this setup one is just majorly um, me having simulation tags on um, rigid body tag on my sphere and also the plane ha having collider tag. So if you play through, you have the normal simulation whereby all this thing falls down. But the thing with the simulation tag is that it creates a kind of um, a block around the collider object such that it doesn't create a kind of indentation or a bulging into the subject. So I'm looking for a way to, sorry, I'm looking for a way to have these objects fall down and once it falls down it should kind of cut through these objects more like compression into the object but then simulation um rigid body simulation tag is not in any way giving me that kind of effect so thinking through i looked at okay how can i create that kind of um indentation and then that brings us to second setup whereby I use the collision deformer. And this collision deformer, basically what it means is you bring the object that you want to collide with and once you bring it close to this, it's create that indentation that I'm looking for, all right? So I have a tutorial about um, collision deformer. I'm going to put the link in the description. To, so if you want to really know about everything here, I have a tutorial about it. So, but then we have this indentation and that is fine. But then uh, I want to have the simulation tag on this object so that once it falls down, it will create that kind of indentation, all right? So that is the kind of setup I'm looking for. So that will take me to the third um, setup whereby I have that simulation tag on this object. And then, so let's see what happens really. So if I, let me hide this, um, for a moment, let's just get rid of this and look at. So if I play through, you notice it falls down and then create that effect. All right. So now this is fine because it creates this effect due to this simulation. But then if I play through, you notice that it's going to fall down and is not interacting with this sphere. So what I did was just to create a simulation um, rigid body on the sphere, but for the um, plane object. I didn't add a collider. I just added a collision deformer and then placed this um, sphere as a collision object. That's how I got this effect. But as soon as I add a collision tag to this, look at what happens. This is where the problem comes. So once I add this collision tag to this, so now I now have a collision tag on this plane and also the collider deformer. If you play through, you notice you don't have that indentation anymore. And it's because the deformer doesn't really go well with um, your simulation tag. So this um, collision deformer really doesn't go well with simulation tag. So, which now brings us to how can we bring these two together such that I'm gonna have a simulation tag, I have a rigid body on this sphere, want it to fall down and at the same time as it's falling down i want it to interact with this um object here i want it to interact with this object so i came up with an idea and also due to some researches research and resources i i got online so i came up with this idea all right so this is the step so i'll just quickly show you the breakdown and show you the step so you have i have this object which is the simulation object dynamic simulated objects which falls down then i now have another cylinder on that which comes up more like to create a bounce so if you play through i have that coming up to create that bounce all right so that is the how i got that bounce off of this just to hide that but i hit this guy so you won't really see it in the um whole final render so now what's the implication of doing this what's the benefit? why am i doing this and the reason is because if i create an object now and i want this object to 
um, if I make this object a collider object, I'm going to have a problem with this because it's not really going to squash this guy down. Remember when I was showing you in the other video, if I make this a, a, a collider object and this interacts with it, it's going to bounce off this. And I don't want that bounce and I want it to kind of crush this down, which is why I added this additional cylinder to just quickly come up, though it's going to be invisible in the scene to create that. So once I have that done, the next thing is for me to now bring an object for it to collide with. Okay, but because I also do not, because you remember I showed you that collision doesn't really work with, um, sorry, simulation, rigid body doesn't work with collision deformer. So what I did was to create another object, another spherical object. So if I unhide this, so the spherical object is exactly the same size with the dynamic spherical object. So hiding the spherical object, what I did to this collider object is, is to add a constraint tag and I made this dynamic simulation a child of a, a parent. So I, I just activated the parent. So I made that the parent to drive this collider object. So wherever this initial cylinder, sorry, initial sphere goes, this new sphere will also go. So it's more like basically the simulation is now driving this, but now this doesn't have any simulation tag. So we can now use this in turn to create that um, collision effect. So if you look at what we have, so hiding this simulation tag, so we are still going to get the same thing you can see. So it's similar to having the first simulation tag. So now, how do we use this guy now that we have added this um, spherical object that doesn't have this rigid body on it? How do we use it for this effect? And that is where this comes in handy. So if you come here, I now have a cylindrical object that I want it to affect, to crush. So this cylindrical object that I wanted to crush, I added to the former. So let me just hide the first one. So the first deformer is a collision deformer. So what this collision deformer does is just to, can you see, is just to squash this, to crush this cylindrical object. And now at this moment, so look at the settings I have for this collision. I went to the advanced, brought down the stiffness, the strut, and the flex. I brought them down. All right, so it will not be too stiff. Then the other thing I also did was, if you look at it, normally, if I'm to leave the next thing, this should is meant to come back because this spherical object is no more on it. So what I did was to come to this object and bring the restore shape. If the restore shape was on, what would have happened was that is that this will come and still come back because I've already cached that. So that's why we are not seeing that. So I brought down the restore shape so that we have this and I don't want it to restore. So for me to smoothen this guy off, because really this doesn't look nice, that's why I added the smooth deformer. But I did something to that smooth deformer. So if you look at this, so this is what the smooth deformer does. But what I did to the smooth deformer is I animated the stiffness. And why did I animate the stiffness? If I show you with this guy, I bring this up. Let me just bring this somewhere here and add a smooth deformer to it. Make it a child of it. So notice what happens to the smooth deformer. Okay. Oh, not surface, smooth, sorry. So I will add a smooth deformer to it, make it a child. Okay, so we're not seeing anything um, yet. So let's see what's Okay, I think I will, let me increase some of this. So let me just add some. So let's make this 12. And maybe this 24. Okay, so you are beginning to see what is happening. So I'll add a little bit of this here and make this two. These are the settings I have for. So these are, the, these were, these were the settings I have for. This object. So you can see what the smooth deformer is doing without the smooth deformer or with the smooth deformer. So it's smoothing this and we don't want this effect because if we look at this, it's going to affect the object we want it to drive. So thereby 
bringing me to at, to animating this stiffness. So if I bring the stiffness way up, so maybe somewhere here, we're going to start with this. So just this is just what I did. Uh, I keyframe this and move to when the object interacts with this. When the sphere interacts with this, then I brought the smoothness to I think 40. Keyframe that and held it for a little while, then brought it back to 100. Okay, so that's what I did here. So I'm going to delete that. So if I come back to this guy and look at the smooth deformer, so that's what I did. You can see that from 100% to 30, held it, then go back to, okay, so I just brought it to 40, not 100. So I still wanted to have a little bit of smooth to it. So that's basically what I did to so smoothen this guy way up. So now, the question now is how do we, because right now this deformer is not what we want. We want it to affect a can. So which is why we brought the can. So the can is now here, so I'm going to hide this smooth deformer. So now this can, I added two deformers to it. So I'm going to get rid of this and see what we have. Okay. So you notice I'm not seeing any effects. So what I did is was to add a surface deformer. So for the surface deformer, so the way surface deformer works is that it's going to ask you to pick an object that you want to drive the deformation on this main object. So I want to deform this can, but now it's asking me to pick a surface object that is going to deform. So whatever happens to that object will in turn be transferred to this can. So we've already deformed this cylinder. So what I just did was to drag this deformed into this place and then initialize. That's just everything I did, initialize. Then if you are to look at it now, this is what happens. And it just goes and deforms that. You can see what I have, all right? So it deforms that cylindrical object. So you might need to move this way until it gives you a very nice effect, maybe moving it to position. Then another thing I did was just a little bit of a secondary animation to it because I, I didn't want it to look too mechanical. So what I did was to add um, a jiggle deformer. So the jiggle deformer would just kind of make, add a little bit of bounce, and bounce to it. Okay, so you can actually see I've, I've actually cached this. So even if I deactivate it, we still see the jiggle effect. So you, so you can see what's happening. <clears throat> so can you see? So once I play through, see a little bit of jiggling. So what I did to the jiggle deformer was just to bring the strength way down and increase the drag. Because the default value for the drag is 10. So I just increase it to 20 so that it drags the um, jiggle effect. So, um, so if we look at everything, hiding all the things that I don't need to see and showing the only things I need to see, which is this guy that is driving and this other one. If you play through, you get to have this effect. So that's how I got this um, effects. Sorry, I didn't um, make this video a tutorial. It's just more of a breakthrough of how I did this. And the reason is because I've been really busy. I just quickly had to take out time to explain this. And then, and if you feel this was helpful, please do give me a like because it helps me on YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe because I do tutorials like this every day. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.